This is podcast number two of the series on management rules to detect melanoma. In the first podcast, we spoke about uh, rule number one, look basically at all lesions. Now we go to rule number two, address high-risk patients. This is a 65-year-old man presenting for evaluation of a dome-shaped nodular lesion on the right temple. Dermoscopic examination confirmed the clinical suspicion of basal cell carcinoma and the tumor was excised. The patient was then dismissed without performing full body examination of the skin and one and a half year later he returned for evaluation of a lesion on the pubic area. Clinical and demoscopic diagnosis of melanoma was straightforward and this topologic examination revealed a bad melanoma with a breast loaf thickness of 8 mm. While a certain proportion of melanomas are detected by the patients themselves, the rest remains to be identified by the clinician. Given that the majority of melanoma arise on covered areas, total body skin examination has been recommended as a method to facilitate early detection. In a previous study assessing the risk of missing a skin cancer if total body skin examination was not performed, several patient factors were found to be significantly associated with this risk. Thus, total body skin examination should be offered at least to the following higher risk groups. First, patients with a personal history of any skin malignancy or a family history of melanoma in first degree relatives. Second, patients under the age of 50 years who present with a more than 20 nevi on the arms. And third, patients over the age of 50 years who present with evidence of chronic solar damage. Application of this rule could help avoid undesirable and dangerous delays in melanoma detection like the one shown previously. The third rule is use the 10 second rule in a single lesion. With experience, dermoscopic diagnosis of benign and malignant skin tumors requires usually only a few seconds. This is because the vast majority of skin neoplasms exhibit repetitive morphologic characteristics, which, if seen enough times previously, are easily recalled and recognized. Of course, as any other imaging technique, uh, dermoscopy requires training, but as soon as uh, uh, the basic uh, experience is acquired, the recognition of one of the stereotypical patterns is usually straightforward. While this is true for the majority of cases, a small proportion of moles exhibit a dermoscopic pattern not typical enough to allow a definite diagnosis of a benign or malignant tumor. This results in a diagnostic dilemma, which is expressed by the prolonged time of dermoscopic examination. These lesions are regarded to be positive to the, second, to the 10 second rule, which is basically a rough indication of the time needed to reach a reliable conclusion and thus the threshold of diagnostic uncertainty. A characteristic example is presented here in which a confident diagnosis cannot be established due to the absence of any specific criteria. Clinicians may choose managing such lesions using a short-term digital monitoring approach. This is a reasonable choice since the occurrence of changes over time represents an additional criterion to diagnose melanoma undetectable at baseline examination. However, in our estimation, in the context of solitary lesion positive to the 10 second rule, the threshold for biopsy should be low enough to maximize early excision of possible melanomas. Rule number four is compare and monitor multiple moles. While the 10 second rule applies for melanoma detection in patients with solitary or few lesions, its use in the context of a patient with the so-called atypical mole syndrome would result in unnecessary excisions of many benign lesions. This is because it is well known that a significant proportion of this neva in a given patient will show some degree of demoscopic irregular features. This subgroup of patients requires special management procedure, which can be summarized in the compare and monitor rule. Comparing refers to the observation that the majority of a given individual's nevi exhibit a similar demoscopic pattern. 
while melanoma reveals different features as it is the case here. In other words, to detect melanoma in this context, a clinician should rather look for the morphologically different lesion than for the most atypical one. This strategy, in addition to facilitating melanoma detection, results also in decreasing the rate of unnecessary, unnecessary excisions of benign lesions. However, even with the application of the comparative approach, some melanomas might still be missing and can be only diagnosed efficiently by monitoring dermoscopic changes over time. Lesions exhibiting morphologic ch changes at short-term follow-up have an 11% probability to be early melanoma and accordingly should be excised. Conversely, long-term follow-up is especially profitable for the detection of slow-growing melanomas, which may change very slowly over a long period of time. In these melanomas, relevant changes usually appear after 12 to 24 months of follow-up. Thus, in patients with multiple atypical nevi, the first re-examination should be scheduled at three months while prolonged annual monitoring should be performed to avoid missing indolent, slow-growing melanomas.